Okay, now we are recording. Um, so once again, welcome everybody. Thank you for uh, coming to this session on how to succeed at a U.S. university. I ask that everybody please remain muted for the duration of this presentation. Um, and then at the end, you will have an opportunity to unmute yourself and ask questions. Um, again, this presentation is being recorded and it will be posted on our UC International YouTube channel. So if you don't feel comfortable, um, you know, being on camera when asking a question, then feel free to leave your camera off. Or you could also type questions into the chat box and I will answer those at the end of the presentation. So I want to first uh, welcome you all again to UC and to the United States. We are so happy that you are here and that you chose UC as the place to further your education. Um, our office at UC International recognizes uh, what a big step it is to pursue education in another country. And we truly admire the bravery of all of our international students that come here. Um, so we hope that you all feel welcomed and please know that we are here to support you in any way that we can throughout your time here. So my name is Kelly Flazabat and I am a program coordinator um, in the UC International Services Office. And our student services and support team provides social, cultural, and academic um, activities and programs and workshops um, that help connect our international student population to uh, one another, to U.S. students, and to the greater uh, UC and Cincinnati uh, communities. I also serve as an academic support liaison uh, for international students. And I will go into details in a couple of slides um, kind of about what that means and what type of support I can offer. So a little bit about me. Uh, I'm a two-time graduate of the University of Dayton here in Ohio. Dayton is about an hour north of Cincinnati. Um, I grew up in the Chicago area, um, but have lived in Ohio on and off uh, since uh, 2011. And um, I've had various roles within international education, so I have worked um, as a study abroad advisor, uh, mainly with U.S. students and sending them abroad to other countries to study. Um, I've also worked with learning living communities. Um, when I was uh, in graduate school, I worked with an international community of students who lived together and did programming and support for them. Um, and I've also taught English abroad in Thailand for a short period of time, about seven months, um, a few years ago. So I um, have kind of various experience uh, in the field of international education, and I've been working here at UC uh, for about a year and a half now. Um, so that's kind of a little introduction of myself. Um, the fun fact at the bottom, you can see I've traveled to around 35 different countries around the world. Uh, so I love learning about different cultures and experiencing different cultures. Um, and again, I really admire anybody who moves to another country to pursue their education. So that was a little about myself. Um, today's session is also going to include an introduction of my role as an academic support liaison and the type of support I can offer you. Um, I'll give an overview of U.S. academic culture and some tips to navigate the differences that you might find um, in the U.S. higher education system versus the academic setting that you might be familiar with. Um, next, I'll talk about some of the academic campus resources that we have here at UC um, to support you, as well as other campus resources that may not be directly related to academics, but could inadvertently affect how you are doing in the classroom. Um, and I'll also talk about some of the different events uh, that our office has coming up that you could participate in um, and some other programs or workshops uh, that you can expect to be offered during the semester. There will also be um, some time at the end again for me to answer any questions that you might have. So I want to um, kind of preface this by saying I know that um, international students have various priorities for, you know, coming to UC and the U.S. and for their time here. Um, some of you may be at UC mainly for the CPT, OPT, and co-op opportunities here or research experience. 
Um, some of you may be more interested than others in really experiencing U.S. culture um, and, you know, meeting American friends and participating in U.S. cultural events. Um, so this presentation is not really going to cover information about CPT or OPT. Um, and I'm not really going to be talking about like uh, American college culture in a broad sense. This is going to be focused on something that you all have in common as international students, and that is the academic piece and taking classes and succeeding in those classes that you'll be taking. Um, so these are some of the things that um, I can do as an academic support liaison from UC International. Um, I can give you tips for adapting to a new learning environment. Um, when I was studying at university, I studied abroad uh, for a semester in Italy, and so um, you know, I had to also adjust to kind of a different type of learning environment. And like I said earlier, I also taught English at a university in Thailand for a period of time. Um, so, you know, I have a little bit of experience adjusting to different types of university settings. Um, and that is a photo there that you can see um, of me with some of my university students in Thailand. Um, I can also connect you to various campus resources at UC. Um, I provide space for you to voice any academic concerns that you might have. Um, so, you know, you can email me for advice about a problem. If you're having any kind of trouble communicating with a professor or you need advice on how to approach a conversation with them, I can assist you with that. And I'm also just here to support you overall in your, you know, personal, personal academic and professional growth. So some objectives um, for this presentation are to become familiar with who I am, what my role um, in UC International involves, um, identify um, key strategies for being successful at a U.S. institution, and then I'll share UC resources that are available to support your academic and personal growth. Um, so now I'm going to kind of get into an overview of U.S. classroom culture. Um, I'll talk about what a syllabus is, uh, what um, type of information you can find in there. I'll also talk about um, what you can expect in terms of the U.S. classroom environment and uh, kind of the relationship between professors and students and what that looks like in the U.S. And I will touch a little bit on academic integrity and plagiarism. So the syllabus is a document that you will receive in every class on the first day of class, usually. Um, some professors might email it to you in advance. Um, and if they do email it to you in advance, uh, make sure to look over it. But your professor will also go through it thoroughly on the first day of classes. Um, the syllabus includes things like the instructor's contact information, uh, where their office is, what their office hours are, and that's when you can go by or stop by and chat with them outside of the class. Um, and then it'll also include um, their contact information, so um, their email address, um, possibly other methods of preferred communication. Um, the syllabus also uh, is going to include a description of the course and what students will be able to take away from that course. So any learning objectives, um, it will include a schedule of readings and assignments so that you can stay, uh, stay on track or be able to plan ahead for the semester. Um, it will include any important dates, any deadlines for assignments, exam days, uh, presentation days, or anything like that. Um, it's also where you can find policies that are specific to that class. Um, so it will include how grading in that class will be conducted, what the attendance policy is. Um, so, you know, sometimes professors might allow you to miss maybe one or two classes during the semester. And then, um, you know, then you'll start being penalized for any additional classes that you might miss. So whatever their attendance policy is, that will be laid out in the syllabus. Um, and then it will also include the professor's policy on late assignments and whether late assignments will be accepted at all. Um, and it'll include some information on academic uh, misconduct and the consequences for not abiding by those policies. So um, in the US classroom, these are some of the preferred teaching methods. Um, some professors 
might have classes that are largely lecture style where the professor is kind of up at the front of the class, um, you know, usually with a PowerPoint and expecting you to take notes um, on what they're saying. Uh, most professors will also incorporate um, small or large group discussions um, and you are expected to participate in discussion here in the US. Uh, so I know that can feel really um, unnatural or scary for a lot of international students who might come from academic settings where um, it's not really normalized to voice your own opinions or viewpoints in class. Um, but in US academic culture, it is highly encouraged to speak up in class, voice your own thoughts on the topic that you're learning about. Um, a lot of times professors will even give grades for participation. Um, so if you don't you know, speak up in class, it could actually negatively affect your overall grade in that class. Another teaching method professors will incorporate is application of theory. Um, so this can be in the form of uh, case studies uh, where you learn about something and then have an example provided where um, you have to kind of arrive at a conclusion based on what you learned. Um, in U.S. higher education, there is also a lot of group work and group projects. Um, so you at times will be expected to meet and work with your peers, both inside and outside of the classroom. And professors also want to see that you're able to apply what you learn in class to the professional opportunities that you engage in, um, whether that's through internships, co-ops, on-campus jobs, et cetera. So um, these are some of the expectations of you as a student. Um, your role is to listen in class, take notes on what is being said and to complete readings. Um, you're also expected to think critically about um, content and you're encouraged to have your own opinions and to express those opinions and perspectives in class. Um, so in the US, it could be you know, a lot more acceptable to challenge your professor if you don't really agree with them. Um, and again, that can seem really unnatural, um, but professors here are not really, you know, the be all end all holders of knowledge like professors are in some other countries. Um, so it's more normal to engage in dialogue. Um, and lastly, your goal is to demonstrate understanding of material through discussion, um, through being prepared for quizzes and through answering questions in class if a professor calls on you. So this slide um, kind of demonstrates how you, you might be evaluated in class and um, what factors are, sorry, there's a couple of people in the waiting room, so I'm just gonna uh, let them in real quick, okay. Um, this slide demonstrates how you might be evaluated in class and what factors could contribute to your overall grade in a class. Um, so again, I used to work as a study abroad advisor, and I would advise a lot of American students who were going to study abroad in other countries. And the biggest uh, piece of feedback I would always get from students uh, when I would ask, you know, how their semester abroad was going. Um, one of the biggest takeaways was that they would talk about um, how adjusting to the academics was difficult, particularly uh, when they would go and study in Europe. They would say that they weren't expecting their entire class grade to be based on like one final exam or maybe a midterm and a final exam. Um, because here in the U.S., it's a lot more normal for your grade to be based on a lot of different factors um, and there's a lot of different things you can be graded on throughout the semester. Um, so these are all kind of examples of those things. Um, you could be graded on attendance. So again, make sure that you're actually going to class. Um, I know that in a lot of other cultures, it's kind of more self-study. Um, and as long as you take that exam at the end of the term, you don't necessarily need to be going to every class. Um, but in the U.S., that's not really the case. You are expected to be in class and be present. Um, I already talked a little about class participation and group projects. Um, so those are also things that you will receive grades on. Um, and then Canvas discussion. 
So Canvas is an online tool. Um, some of you may have taken that um, new international student orientation that was through Canvas. Um, it's also a tool where faculty um, upload course content and accept assignments. So students can submit their work through that platform um, and you can collaborate with instructors and other students within Canvas. Um, so sometimes you'll be um, expected to be part of an online discussion um, within Canvas and then you could receive grades on that as well. And then also um, written exams, oral exams, quizzes and papers are all things that you receive grades on. Also, all of these things um, could be equally weighted in a class, um, and you'll be able to find that breakdown of what percentage of your grade each of these items will be um, in that syllabus. Okay, so um, some of you may be coming from academic settings where the student-professor relationship is um, a lot more formal, or some of you might be coming from academic settings where it's a little less formal um, or, you know, more formal in certain ways and less formal in other ways. Um, so, for example, you know, when I was teaching English in Thailand, um, my students were a lot more um, formal in the ways that they would address me in person, um, and the university was more formal in that there was you know, a, a pretty strict dress code and students would wear uniforms every day. Um, but it was also less formal in other ways. Uh, like my students would, you know, regularly ask me to hang out with them, you know, outside of class. And that was very normalized there. Um, or instead of emailing me, students would often message me through Facebook or through a social media app to let me know if they weren't going to be in class that day. Um, so in the U.S., the relationship between between professors and students is basically regarded as a business relationship that's based on academic and professional mentorship um, rather than a familial one. So um, in the US, email is the best method to communicate with professors. Um, when you email a professor, always start by addressing it to them and letting them know who you are. Um, also make sure that you're regularly checking your email um, as that's how people at the university are going to be contacting you with important information. If you are unsure of how to address your teacher in general, start by calling them professor unless they ask you to call them by another title or if they sign their emails with a different title in front of their name. Um, some professors might prefer that you call them by their first name, um, but, you know, don't do that unless that is what they tell you that they prefer. It's always a good idea, like I said, to start with professor. Um, the classroom dress code in the U.S. is very informal. Um, so, you know, it is pretty common for students to wear sweatpants or T-shirts to class. Um, and I know that that's also very different compared to some other cultures, um, but, you know, uh, feel free to wear whatever you feel most comfortable in. Um, professors schedule weekly office hours, um, and it's a good idea to introduce yourself early in the term. So that way you'll feel uh, more comfortable if you need to go and talk to that professor um, about a problem with your coursework or if you have any questions, um, it'll be easier to go and ask them if you have already kind of met with them one-on-one -on -one and were able to introduce yourself. Um, also, if you ever want to ask a professor for a reference, maybe um, if you're applying for a job or applying to graduate school later on, um, it's really important that your professor actually knows who you are um, and can speak to your ability to perform that role or to go, you know, to that grad school program. So I definitely encourage you to attend their office hours once in a while and spend some time making sure that your professors know who you are. Um, use those office hours to ask questions, discuss coursework, and request assistance before you fall behind. Um, and then if you want to have like a longer conversation about academic goals 
or professional mentorship, um, then it's best to schedule a separate time to meet with them and schedule an appointment with them and not use their office hour time for those longer conversations. When you talk to or email your professor, um, be direct and to the point and keep the conversation kind of focused on the class uh, questions or problems that you're having. Um, it is also common in the US for there to be teaching assistants or TAs um, in the classroom that assist the professor, or in some cases, they may even be the ones actually teaching the class. Um, so if you have a teacher who, you know, looks like they could be about your age, um, it's likely a graduate student TA who is helping with that class. Um, it is also important to stay in touch with your academic advisor. Um, every student at the university is assigned an academic advisor. Most of you have probably already met with them or communicated with them in some form. Um, they are the ones who will work with you to navigate your college experience, making sure that you're staying on track for degree completion. Um, they'll discuss your course requirements with you and make sure that you're planning out your course schedule appropriately. They're also another resource to advocate for you and to connect you with campus resources. Um, if you're having any type of academic problem, they are the best people to talk to. Um, and you can schedule an appointment with your academic advisor via My Bearcat Network, um, or I think, you know, you can um, find their email and their information within IBG or um, other systems as well, um, or you can always um, email them to, you know, set up an appointment, but if you don't know who they are or where to find their contact information, then feel free to reach out to me and I can um, help connect you with them. That is one of the things I'm here for is to make sure that you are connected to all of the resources that are available to help you. So um, to touch a little bit on academic integrity and plagiarism, um, plagiarism is the practice of um, taking someone else's work or ideas and passing them off as your own. Um, so these are all the different ways that UC defines plagiarism, um, submitting another's published or unpublished work as one's own without crediting the author, submitting as one's own original work without reference to the source of the material, or submitting as one's own original work produced through unacknowledged collaboration with others, or submitting one's own previously written work without modification and instructor permission. Um, and I know that this is a concept that might be very unfamiliar to a lot of you. Um, plagiarism is not really a universal concept or something that is seen as wrong in some other countries. But in US higher education, it is not allowed and there can be really strict consequences for it. Um, so the Academic Writing Center on UC's campus or um, UC libraries can give really good advice on avoiding plagiarism. And I will talk a little bit more um, about these resources in a couple of slides. Also last semester, um, we created a video series that lives on our UC International YouTube page um, and also was added to that online orientation for new international students in Canvas. Um, and this video series um, explains the cultural context of plagiarism, how UC defines plagiarism and advice for how you can prevent unintentional plagiarism. So I would definitely recommend checking that out um, and if you have any additional questions about the concept of plagiarism, reaching out to the Academic Writing Center or UC Libraries to make sure that you're really clear on that, because we don't want there to be any negative consequences um, for something that you unintentionally might do. Um, so next, I'm going to go over some academic campus resources. Uh, first, I want to emphasize before even getting into the, the various resources on campus that you should use your resources. These are um, all things that are, you know, for the most part, free to US or to UC students um, and can help with a variety of topics or issues. 
So these are um, some of the academic campus resources at UC. Um, I already talked about your academic advisor and what they can assist you with. Again, the UC libraries are also a great resource for research support, um, borrowing books or materials. And there are dozens of subject librarians who can help you find information on specialized subjects. Um, we actually have a couple of our librarians here with us in this session, and um, they're going to take a couple of minutes to introduce themselves and their roles and what they can assist you with. Um, so Olga and Asia, if you want to kind of um, unmute yourself and jump in for a minute, feel free to introduce yourself. And I also have your slide in um, on the next slide ad advertising your session coming up. So. Great, thank you so much. Um, um, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Olga Hart. I work in Langsam Library, and I am a subject librarian for a number of disciplines, uh, mainly taught at the College of Arts and Sciences, but I also teach uh, a huge number of uh, general classes and do general reference. So if you go on uh, like chat uh, chat with a librarian, I will be one of those people you chat with. Those are not robots. It's not AI. Our library chat is staffed with real people who communicate real time. And also <clears throat> if you uh, send your question via ask a librarian form, uh, online, you will fi can find all of them on our website, uh, libraries.uc.edu. Uh, so the, all those questions, the majority of those questions, I should say, uh, go to me. So I am very well aware of what questions people ask. I also wanted to say that it was very, very nice to meet you yesterday. Uh, some of you yesterday um, at the um, American style uh, cookout, and I was impressed, you know, for example, I have never met a person from Nepal, so it was wonderful, wonderful for, for after several years of uh, the campus being empty or, you know, not as populated to see you all, and we struck several interesting conversations about libraries, uh, like can freshmen use libraries? People were surprised that I said, oh, you can come and work at the library, but you can also take a nap. Oh, really? Is that allowed? So I know that there is a lot, a lot to learn about libraries. And this is what um, hopefully Asia will uh, talk to you about. So I can't wait to see you at the libraries. While you will definitely visit your college and departmental library maybe first, I would love to see you at Langsam Library as well, because it's a great place to hang out, meet with people, and uh, uh, meet librarians. Thanks, Olya. Um, hi, and welcome to UC. My name is Asia Bettencourt McCarthy. I am a science and engineering librarian. Um, so I work in the engineering library as well as with international students. And I want to encourage you all um, to, if it fits in your schedule, attend the library workshop that we have planned on September 6th. There's a link in the chat to sign up as well as with this QR code. And that will provide you with an overview of what the, all the, that the library has to offer, as well as how we can support you with research, um, academic honesty, and other really important issues. So if you're able to make the workshop, um, please do so. If you can't make it, or if you have any questions, again, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, and we look forward to hearing from you. So thank you again. Great, thank you both so much for introducing yourselves and saying a little bit more about the libraries. Um, I'm going to go back to the previous slide. Um, the Learning Commons are another um, campus resource at UC. Um, it's kind of a hub of a ton of different academic resources. Um, so I have a few of the services that they offer listed here, um, but there are a lot more that they offer as well. 
Um, they have peer tutoring if you need help in a specific subject. Um, they also have academic uh, coaching, which is helpful for students who maybe don't need help in one particular subject, but need help getting organized and learning how to be more efficient with their study time. And the Learning Commons also houses the Academic Writing Center, um, which provides free writing assistance. Um, they also host success skills workshops, um, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a couple of slides. Um, and we also at UC offer English language support, um, which also I have a slide about. So I will go into more details about that. Again, here's the information for that workshop that Asia mentioned. If you wanna go ahead and scan that QR code or she posted the link in the chat, um, and I definitely encourage any of you to attend that if you are available at that time. So these are some of the success skills workshops offered by the Learning Commons. And these are free one hour long uh, sessions about various topics. Um, this is not a full list, but just some examples of the types of workshops they offer. You can find a full list of sessions on the Learning Commons website, um, and they also should be, you know, posting their full schedule of sessions for the fall very soon. So you can go online and register for those in advance if you're interested. At UC, again, we also offer English language support. Um, so we have a Center for English as a Second Language, or CESL, um, that is housed in the um, College of Education, um, Human Resources, and Criminal Justice. Um, so in that unit, um, they provide ESL courses to international graduate and undergraduate students at UC. Um, so those are classes that you would enroll in for credit. Um, and so they do have a cost associated with them, um, but they have um, different classes on, you know, writing, speaking, um, listening uh, skills, as well as reading skills. So they have all sorts of classes that can help you with different um, language learning topics. Um, if you're looking for a free resource, um, we work closely with the um, Clifton Library, which is the public uh, library in the Clifton neighborhood of Cincinnati. Um, and they offer an ESL conversation group that is free and that is um, weekly on Thursdays from 11.30 to 12.30 they meet. Um, and that is a good way to practice conversational English in a casual environment um, and again for free. So there's no cost associated with attending that um, session. So I also want to touch briefly on some other campus resources at UC um, besides strictly academic resources, because there are outside factors that could be negatively affecting how you're doing academically. And it may not be an issue of just needing academic support. Um, you know, having a healthy mind, um, body and overall wellness will also help you be successful in the classroom. So these are some additional resources at UC to support your physical, mental, and overall health. Um, so counseling and psychological services or CAPS, they offer mental health counseling, one-on-one um, -on -one sessions, as well as group therapy for certain topics. Um, they offer crisis intervention, University Health Services, um, if you guys were on the session prior to this, they spoke a little bit about what they offer, um, but they are kind of the primary care um, unit on campus and they um, offer immunizations. So if you still need to get your immun immunizations that you need here in the US, um, you can make an appointment with University Health Services to do that. Um, they also have a pharmacy where you can go and get any kind of prescriptions that you need. Um, we also have a student wellness center and they focus on kind of holistic wellness. Um, so they have different sessions on alcohol education, financial wellness, um, having healthy relationships, 
Um, so kind of beyond the medical or, you know, mental health needs, they focus on that overall well-being and offer um, a lot of sessions to kind of help you get to that overall um, wellness. Also campus recreation, um, all of you have access to use the campus recreation facilities um, with your student ID, you can swipe in and use, um, you know, workout um, facilities. Um, they offer fitness classes that you could sign up for. Um, they have personal training that you could sign up for. And they also have intramural sports. So if you're interested in um, playing um, intramural football, soccer, um, tennis, you know, whatever you might be interested in, they have different teams that you can sign up for to um, become involved in playing those kinds of sports. And there is a small fee associated with being on one of those teams, but it is a great way to meet people and to, um, you know, just get some exercise during your day. So once again, um, I want to reiterate one more time, to use these resources that I've talked about. Um, again, these are, unless otherwise noted, um, free for the most part to UC students. Um, so definitely take advantage of them while you're here. Um, these are resources that are used daily by UC students and um, it's completely normal and encouraged to use them. Um, if you want to, you know, go somewhere on campus, like one of the libraries or one of the um, resources that the Learning Commons offers, but you don't know how to get there or you don't want to go alone or you want to at least, you know, go with someone else for the first time, let me know and I'll go with you. I'm happy to, you know, take you to any of these spots on campus um, so that you are able to become familiar with where they are. Um, and you know how to use them. And I'm happy to assist you in any way so that you are comfortable using these campus resources. So these are um, some upcoming events that are being organized by our office in the coming weeks. Um, so on August 18th and 19th, so tomorrow and Saturday, um, our office has organized a free Ikea shuttle. So Ikea is somewhere um, you can go to buy a lot of furniture, or bedding, kind of whatever you would need for your apartment or wherever you're living. Um, they have a ton of stuff. It's a, a huge um, shop that has a lot. So um, we're offering that free Ikea shuttle that will be running um, from UC to Ikea and back on both of those days. Um, it'll be leaving from Campus Green Garage Transit Hub at 12 p.m. both days and returning at 4 p.m. both days. And I know that seems like a really long time, but trust me, there is so much there um, that it may not even be enough time. <laughs> um, so I would definitely encourage you to take advantage of that if you still need things for your housing, your apartment. Um, that is, you know, a great um, place to get a lot of that stuff. We also are hosting um, soccer and snow cones on August 20th, so on Sunday. And this is an event that our office hosts that um, involves a uh, kind of round robin tournament of soccer. Um, and we have, you know, we make teams and set up some different games. So you're able to play, I say soccer, but a lot of you probably say football. Um, but you're able to play football, and uh, we also will be making snow cones, which um, if you're not familiar with what snow cones are, it's like an icy that has flavoring, um, so it's kind of like shaved ice, um, and there's different flavors you can choose from, so um, this will be happening at Sheikley Field um, from 11 to 1 p.m. on Sunday. On August 23rd, we're doing a campus scavenger hunt and our graduate assistant, Jessica, will be leading that. Um, so if you're interested in participating in a scavenger hunt um, and going to different places around campus to become familiar with where things are, um, that will be starting at 6 p.m. and you'll meet in the TUC, the Tangeman University Center, um, in the atrium area of that building. Um, and that will be from 6 to 7 p.m. on August 23rd. 
And then later this month on August 31st, we are hosting um, a meetup to go and eat Skyline Chili. Um, and more details will be coming out about that regarding um, time and the specific location that we're going to. But Skyline Chili is something that is um, very famous from Cincinnati. Um, so it's it's a restaurant and um, they have, you know, it's it's a specific type of chili that they they make and is famous here um, in this area. So um more information will be coming about that via the newsletter. So all international students will be receiving um, a newsletter from our office that comes out on the first and third Tuesday of every month. So um, I definitely recommend reading through that every time that that comes out to stay up to date on the upcoming events and activities or workshops that are offered through our office or through other offices that we partner with and are collaborating with to offer um, different things for you all. Um, so these are some other um, presentations that um, I either give or that are in the works currently. Um, so the first one is what you all are attending right now, um, Academic Success at an American University. Um, and then we also, you know, partner with uh, the libraries. I mentioned that um, video series that lives on our YouTube page um, that has information about plagiarism and plagiarism prevention. Um, and then the libraries mentioned their other workshop that they have coming up for you to become more familiar with library resources and going on kind of a mini tour of the libraries. Um, so that's another session that that is coming up. And then we're also offering um, in October and November. So there's kind of two different sessions um, of it that are focusing on different things, but we have kind of a business etiquette for international students workshop. Uh, so the first day of that, uh, which will be in October, is kind of a resume and cover letter writing workshop where you can also have the opportunity to take a professional headshot um, and have some advice on how to um, write a resume or cover letter um, that can get you hired for um, different jobs. And then the other um, session of that same workshop that will be hosted in November, the second session will focus on kind of mock interviewing and we're bringing in some different companies from the area um, to kind of be there and go through uh, like a mock interview process um, to help you feel better prepared when it comes time to interview for jobs. Um, and then if there is any academic related topic that you want to learn more about, let me know and I will, you know, see if I can set it up or if we can partner with somebody um, on campus to set up a workshop on um, whatever academic topic that you don't know about and want to know more about. So I'm definitely happy to, you know, have any kind of input of what would be helpful for you all. So this is um, my contact information. If you um, want to contact me, I definitely um, recommend scheduling a time in advance if you plan to meet with me in person, um, just because I work from home a couple of days a week and I work in the office a couple of days a week. So um, if you want to stop by, you know, I might not be there if, unless you schedule that time in advance. So um, I'm located in Edwards Center One in the UC International Office, um, and that's the big, big, tall gray building across from the Kroger grocery store, and we're up on the seventh floor. Um, and then you can also call me. This is my office phone, um, and my email is listed there as well. Um, email is always going to be the best um, way to get in contact with me just because, again, I'm not in my office every day. Um, so email is a preferred method of communication. Um, and yeah, I'm always happy to assist you in any way that I can. Um, so definitely feel free to reach out to me if you want any kind of advice, again, about uh, communicating with a professor um, or anything that you might need help with. Um, that is what I'm here for. So I just want to say thank you again for attending this session. Um, and I hope that you learned something. And um, again, welcome to UC and to the U.S. And we are so excited that you're here.
Um, so I will take any questions if there are any. Um, I don't think I see any in the chat box, but if you have any questions, feel free to post them in that chat or to unmute yourself. And um, we have uh, you know a few minutes left that I can answer any questions that you have. So um, I will also stop recording now in case um, that makes you feel more comfortable to ask a question. Um, so I'll go ahead and stop that. I can. <laughs> Sorry, I think my internet just kind of went in and out. 